yesterday we have arrived to Kanchanaburi where we can find the famous uh, bridge on the River Kwai which is actually not even River Kwai but we are going to show you around we're going to show you the museums around the bridge and we are also going to take you to the war cemetery and also to the famous bridge let's go Yesterday we have arrived here in Kanchanaburi by following the YOLO protocol. You just go in the first bus which looks like the good one, ask around, hop in, go to the next destination. It took us around 4-5 hours of bus to reach a place which was a couple of hours of distance because... Uh, 60 kilometers. Yeah, not so much yeah. far, but uh, eventually we were addressed to a school bus and it was taking um, stops like uh, everywhere. Imagine, here is Kanchanaburi, and here we have uh, us, going like this, right? Wrong. The school bus goes like this. <laughs> Finally, it reached our destination. And now, we are very freshly rested and uh, rested again. We are here in a spooky house. This is not a war uh, concentration that museum, yeah? And, uh, yeah, stick with us. We got a big surprise for you. We have arrived to the war cemetery. This is the biggest one out of the three which can be found in Kan Kanchanaburi, close to the death railway. Here lies 6,982 soldiers, mainly from Britain, Holland, Australia and New Zealand. They were giving their lives to build the death railway, which, is, which was built for the Japanese between uh, Siam, Tha now Thailand, and Burma, now Myanmar. We arrived on the bridge on the river Meklong, which was renamed Kwai after the Hollywood blockbuster and after the horde of tourists which were too, much, too confused to find the right river so they had to rename it for marketing purposes. And this uh, bridge took around uh, 16 months of uh, slavery work, so 18 hours uh, every day in um, quite harsh condition. Imagine uh, in the, working in the jungle without roads, without shade. Uh, in the monsoon period, uh, yeah. without hospitals, nothing. 
was not only flourishing in the 50s when people tried to find River Kwai and they couldn't, also now uh, it's quite a mass tourism here. We were quite shocked when we saw on the other side of the bridge it's full of stalls, like thousands of stalls selling souvenirs, food, necklaces and all these kind of things. But what is even more shocking to see is this. They made basically a fair and amusement park at the camp where the prisoners of war were living. For instance, look at this. gonna make it to the mountain better late than not <laughs> we are finally walking to the hellfire pass museum and to the hellfire pass <laughs> center we got an audio guide so we can hear uh, what happened along the way plus we also got a radio for safety reasons and they are checking us checking on us time to time that everything is fine and as they remind you the beginning of the tour there is no rescue vehicle or pickup drop off service so they are on our own The workers were only using picks and hammers to remove enormous amount of stones every day and what they were getting as a food was just like a handful of rice, rotten meat, dried fish which was only having bones in it. very few people continuing their way deep into the jungle after the konyu cutting, after the hellfire bus they stop at the memorial and they go back to the interpretation center of the hellfire pass and, and but why is it called hellfire pass uh, when it was originally called konyu cutting it was because uh, in 1943 this, uh, between april and august the japanese realized that they need to speed up the work they called it speedo what they were doing uh, so everyone was working like the people were working 24 hours a day and they were lighting up the pass with bamboo torches and it looked like having or cutting a pass through the hell itself. Mm -hmm. 